with Shadow Fiend's uh, Requiem? No. Oh, you mean Presence of Dark? Presence of Dark. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Th this Blink stun into Requiem can be big if Necroman wants to go for like a Denny style SF where you go for Blink play. I think there's a lot of combo potential there for Burden. And their team is also extremely good late game. Like, Centaur actually scales into his own fairly well as a core. He becomes yep. extremely tanky. Return actually starts hurting a lot for any hero that's not another core on the side of Navi. And then you're also going to have the utility of Stampede with Aghanims, like you spoke about earlier, having that really good damage reduction for any point in the game where you feel like you're in harm's way. So, I do think that Navi, for this particular game, a lot of their game plan is based off Dendi's punch. Like, what can he get done? And if he has a good game, I think Na'Vi will be looking pretty good to take this 2-0. However, if he's not really able to find those hooks and Burden get ahead in the laning phase, I think it could be the opposite. I think Burden could be looking to take this to a game 3. Well, let's start it right there with Dendi, as he is going to be playing Hutch for Na'Vi on the Radiant side. Art style handling that Earthshaker, kind of dropping a ward on the mid lane. On the top, it's going to be Funnick playing Bristleback. Double Tango being purchased. Uh, on the bottom lane, Suniko playing Winter River once again, and it's going to be joined by Havos, who's playing that Gyrocopter. Alright, and then on the side of Birdie United, we're going to have Paris playing um, the Centaur War Runner. Towards the middle lane, we're going to have Come With Me walking into the woods here on a Shadow Demon. Next to him is going to be Necroman on the Shadow Fiend. Wisp is going to be handled, of course, by Minox, and then Sing is going to be playing the Slarder. I know we're very far away from uh, from this, but I do want to mention that Burning United has a very poor team of going up against High Ground. Pretty much Shadow Fiend's the only one that can hit tier 3 towers, and that's going to put him, as well as teammates, in prime position of being the hooked. Battle yeah, it, it, that is true. I just think that the way to take out High Ground is a little bit different, and Hubble's a little bit out of position here. There is a Tether and a Necroman. Looks like they're not going to be able to deal enough damage to get a kill. He did not want to skill uh, level 1 race. But, as far as going High Ground, I think Burden... They're probably going to need picks, but they're also very good at controlling the map because they have multiple heroes who can initiate. Slaughter, so, relocate, right, right, right. Centaur. So they're going to go for more of the take the map control and never get it back until we have so much of an advantage that we can just straight up end the game. And now this situation for Dendi is not great. The dual lane against the Pudge is bad news. So instead of him having a support nearby that can help out, it seems like the Wisp is going to be the one from the side of Burden who's ensuring that Necroman has a good laning phase. Well, that said, though, he's actually not afraid to go in to get the last end deny, so I say Dendi's still doing all right. But uh, it is important, like you said, for Shadow Fiend to get in. Funic. He's taking some damage here. Should be fine. Yeah. He's actually put the first point into his uh, passive, so he should be pretty resistant when he's trying to run away. Yeah, what is it? Oh, oh hook on the Dendi! Is that first Excuse me, on to Necroman! Yep. Dendi with the hooks! What a player! Alright, so the second that the Wisp wasn't in range, just immediately dead. And that was before Minutes even had his bottle. Bottom line, though, Sasha taking some damage. I'm always gonna force him back. I mean, that's pretty much lane one for Dendi, right? Because he's not looking to get those kills, he's not looking to get the last hits, he just want that level 5-6. And getting that is just... kind of... It's uh, icing on the cake, for yeah. sure. Like, finding that hook was something that I didn't think was going to happen, just because, like, dual lane, you kind of expect every once in a while the Wisp will leave to go stack, but that timing, you can calculate it, right? You're just like, okay, he's going to be gone from, like, the second of, like, 42 plus until the minute, and then he's going to come back. Bottom so. lane, we're going to see a wraparound from Winter River, and so... Once Arctic Burn's ready to go, it should be a very easy kill with Fissure online. I but do think he knows. Yeah, he definitely knows. Very good awareness. I, I do believe he had a war that saw the entrance to Jungle Funnick going for a solo oh. kill. It's gonna get Is he gonna get two? Well, the cast... Alright, never mind. The wand's gonna get popped. He's got three stacks of poison on right now, but I don't know what level poison it is. Middle lane, though, in the meantime, Dendi does end up dropping. I gotta say, this early game still, even with Dendi going down there once, the Shadow Fiend's still only sitting on 4 CS. So I'd say that Dendi has been doing exceptional in his lane given the circumstances. And the fact that Funic even just gets a, a kill, now he has his bottle on top of that, he'll be able to go back to full mana. Are well, they gonna go for a kill? Disrupt should do it. There is double damage on the Wisp. Not known for hitting pretty hard, but he actually kind of runs back away from Man. tower range. Funic will be fine. If only Singh had boots there. I think he actually had enough to buy to the side shop. I think that would have resulted in the kill. Sprint into the side shop, go for the chase? I think he, well, depending on the path you take, like if you walk along the tree line, you can still buy boots. You don't actually have to go all the way into the shop. Or at the very least, you can take the outside path and allow yourself to get there quicker. Winter River and cutting around one more time. The hook will miss. I think he could have waited for the, so uh, uh, Sonic burn to, Arctic Burn to initiate. 
Yeah, perhaps. Now Sonico taking a pretty big beating here. As eating a raise and a right click, Dendi will be forced to bottle himself back up too. But I kind of... Uh, I, I don't know, like, the Pudge is still farming better than the Shadow Fiend. Like, 14 and 6, compare that to 7 and 3. That's just the kind of presence that a Pudge has in lane. Yeah. Like, this is why the matchup is so volatile, is if the Shadow Fiend gets ahead, he usually stays ahead, unless a hook lands. But the hook landed so early that Dendi's just having way too much of a laning presence for Necroman to deal with his on, on his own. A lot of this is Dendi playing very well, though. I mean, he is known for his Pudge. Which, I mean, every time you see Dendi play a game like this, like 10 more pub Pudge players born and then it's not games are had. But, uh... It is one of the hardest heroes to be proficient with. And here we go, another hook lands on a Necroman. Should be an easy kill. Tether comes in, bottle charges are there. Looks like it's going to be enough for Minots to keep him going. I thought they would be able to get that for sure, but... I thought like the he could have dived that, but... Yeah, I thought he was going to dive. That's what I thought was going to happen, but maybe he didn't feel comfortable with the amount of health that he had. And yeah. he does secure himself a regen rune in the meantime. So it's not like killing him would have been nice, but securing both ruins is also good. Well, the thing is, he was getting overcharged and healed by the Wisp, so it could have really turned around if he yeah. did choose to dive. And two death in a row, not what you're looking for. And I think this is the time where Pudge, after he gets level 5, uh, starts to roam. Or maybe he'll stay around for level 6 as well. I think you kind of want to wait until 6. Funnick, by the way, is stealing a stack in the woods here at the medium camp. It was fairly large. He's, what, close to uh, level 6 after this is dead? That is very, very good for him. So he just read the situation perfectly. Now Necromancer sitting here, he's like, what the hell, my large camp is only one stack and my medium camp is just dead. That is not good if you're burden right now. The thing that we haven't really touched on here for Burden United is that they don't actually have any ways to kill Hero until they get Blink Daggers. Which, given how their early game is going, is uh, not going to come anytime soon. Well, I don't know if they necessarily need Blink, but Relocate should be enough. Or if the Shadow Demon can smoke and find an opening disruption. That could be another way. Because that will allow any other hero with a disabled to get in range. And they have Stampede. I guess so. So Stampede can just get you oh, in for free. Dendi just walking up, taking triple raises. He will die. But it gives kind of a hook. Burning United will take that. Take that to the bank. Top lane here, Funnick. Gonna get initiated on, but he's actually running towards the Shadow Demon. Now, sort of running away, three poison stack. Here comes that Arctic Burn. Funnick turning around, a lot of stack on Sing Sing. He will pop the wand, trying to run away. Splinter Blast will apply the slow, but Funnick not gonna give the chase under the tower. That was a bit of a close one, but everything considered, I'd say Navi are still edging out Burden a tiny bit in the laning phase. I mean, look at look at Havosa's deny. He's got 20 deny against the Centaur. Yeah, but this is expected. Centaur can't get anywhere near him in the wave. Like, if he does, he just gets Rocket Barrage and gets forced back. But Smoke up here from Na'Vi. They're going to look for... Well, I guess they're going to find Come With Me, if anybody. He's the only one that's even in the vicinity. Oh, God, unless the Wisp walks right in. Oh, the Creeps helping the Shadow Demon out a little bit. The hook, though, it will connect regardless. Come With Me will go down. And Pudge gets the Rot, the rot Kill. Are they just going to dive? Yes, yeah. they will. Hook's coming off cooldown. That's a hard hook to land. He's got... Oh, okay. Yeah, he didn't have the distance. For uh, 48 moves speed right now on Sting, so he just moves a little bit too fast. They're going to teleport more in. Looks like they want to try to chase this. He went for a tether slow on Funnick, but unfortunately not going to be able to get it. And I don't think they're going to get anything out of this. They even teleport come with me back to the top lane. But I guess he was supporting a lane anyway, so he might as well. I think the more important thing is that Centaur TP. So he's... Further and further away from that level 6. Well, not literally further and further away, but he's definitely slowed down. And Havola is uh, still having a time of his life on the bottom lane. I'm wondering at what point they actually do something about this. Destruction in the top lane, though. Funic, he's going to be taking a lot of damage with that Soul Catcher on. Come with me, we'll be able to secure that kill, and maybe the guy can finally buy himself a pair of shoes, because he hasn't had any up until now. There you go. Fix it up. Yeah. And Dismember, gonna be up on Dendi here in just a second, he'll hit level 6. I'm just thinking to myself, like, how successful does this Pudge need to be? Like, are we looking for Dendi to just go, like, beyond godlike? Of course it would be fun to see, but is it necessary? No. I think, let's say he disappears off the map for the next 5-7 minutes and finds, like, one or two kills. That's already enough. The fact that he's off the map, it's already pressuring Burden United, delaying their Blink Daggers. And if you get one or two like key hooks either on Shadow Fiend or maybe just one or two supports, these supports, something we haven't mentioned is that they're very underfarmed and under level. We talked about how Shadow Demon just picked up boots yeah. for eight minutes in the game. And now he's 
a well played punch by Dendi is going to be off the map. And once your tier 1s are down for Britain United, you're not getting anything farm wise. You're just too scared to leave the tier 2s. It does have a tendency to make people play together whenever you're against that punch and yeah. you just you can't see him so and this is not a great team to play together it, it's not like your undying necro where you could push towers right yeah that's true their, their push actually is pretty bad i think they're really relying on the centaur hitting six first and foremost even maybe more so than the relocate because they need stampede to be able to start engagements Without that, it's just, it's insanely difficult for them to really make anything happen. Like you mentioned them leaving Blink Daggers, which I do agree with, but Stampede is their, the way they bridge the gap between not having Blinks and getting to Blinks. It's just right. having that little bit of a level advantage, so. Tavo is still just being a monster in terms of farm, 65 and 28 here. Looks like they want to try to go in. Sonico's in the area, Disruption's going to be there. Sonico going in for the stomp. He's going to get a nice blast off and Arctic Burn. Havos just gets obliterated though. Burden, they level 6 on their Sentai. They're going to stand oh, before they're looking up? for Sonico. He does not have Disruption up in time. That 25 second cooldown. But Sampi is the, the huge pick up there. Yeah. We're seeing it. Pudge is coming in position. There is a high ground ward behind the Roshan. So let's see if Dendi's got the hook path. That's the other very difficult thing about playing a, a Pudge well. You have to have a good estimate of where the enemy wards are. And that's why a lot of Pudge buy smokes to kind of bypass Radiant's all of that together. Tower is under Especially attack. during daytime. That's the part where it becomes increasingly difficult for the Pudge to hook. Because at night, you can just hook from fog. Yeah. And it's very hard to see. He's going to throw one out right Ooh. now. Misses just barely. If he, had, if he was level 7, that would have hit. Yeah, maybe. I think if Sakshay kept running down, then it probably eh, it would have been really close. I don't know. Hard to say. The other nice thing is that when you have a punch disappear off the map, it allows one of your secondary supports to start getting uh, some key items. Yeah. Which Far I imagine way. is going to be the shaker of this game. Although our style generally plays a very sacrificial role, so we'll see. Yeah, they, normally at this stage in the game, we, we have a tendency to talk about stuff like whose late game is better, you know, who needs to push, who's on the timer. But really, it's just all about the punch. Yeah. Like, if the punch does well, the team will do well. If the punch does not do well, the team will have a significantly harder time. And right now, it seems like they're going to make it a little bit harder on Na'Vi. They're looping around here on Funic. Amplified damage is going to be applied. There is a ward behind this tower as well. Burden have full vision of what's going on here. Sing is going to charge forward. He leads it out. They're going to throw out a Demonic Purge, and Sing takes a ton of damage from those quills. Good god. I guess he was getting hit by the tower too, but still. The one thing that Burning United has Radiant's going for them is that the burst damage is unparalleled. Attack. Like, they see a target, they slow and stun him, and he's dead. Dyer's yeah, he goes flat. So, the TP supports are... I don't want to say not there for Na'Vi. Even if they TP immediately when he's gone on, Radiant's that person's probably dead regardless. Then they sell smokes. I think Dyer's it's actually seen. They're picking him out. In fact, they're initiating the stun will miss. It looks like the hook should be easy hook. There's four guys and Stampede for the retreat. Not the best way you want to use it, but hey man, if it's preventing a kill, it's preventing a kill. And that just means that all the reaction from Na'Vi that they had right there was just wasted time. It was a solo smoke and, what, two TP squirrels being used? Yeah. So they, they see Sing blink in, they immediately TP react, but by that time, the TPs were already so long that they weren't even going to be there in time to do anything anyway. So they were almost 100% reliant on Dendi landing a hook to even result in any benefit whatsoever from that. And they just weren't able to get much. So earlier you asked the question, how much does this punch need to do? And the answer I gave was not much. Just need to get one or two kills and disappear off the map, apply pressure. Would yeah. you agree to that seeing the past five minutes or, or do you attack. think he needs to do more now? I think he does need to do more. Here's the thing. If the Shaker was any closer to Blink than he is right now, I would say that maybe he's not as pressured because the Shaker can be a secondary method of sting up hooks, right? Like you Blink Fissure or you Blink into a really big Echo and you can hook somebody out, you get a solo kill off that, you take a team fight. There's Dyer's ways to play around it if you're attack. just not finding the hooks on your own. But our style is ages away from his Blink. So it's going to be a very long time before anyone else is going to be able to help him set it up unless Sonico can get in range to throw out a Winter's Curse. Other than that, it's it's him on his own accord. Like, he has to be able to land the hooks. It's going to be a lot easier when Burdens start trying to fight into you to land those hooks. Like, if they're sieging towers, that's right. kind of Pudge's forte, right? Outside of playing in Fog. But I do think that, at the very least, he wants to make something else happen. Because as of right now, he's, he's got okay farm. Like, 42 CS for a Pudge is actually pretty high. But, in general, you will fall behind. 
be being used to retreat, but you're not retreating from this punch who has a haste right He's coming straight for come with me, gets the kill, and he could go for more if he likes. Go back off. The, the other thing I want to mention is when the punch was picked, Sing Sing blinks out and should be okay. Yeah, when the punch was picked, I was a little bit apprehensive about it because I, I feel like once you get the hook, there's just so many ways that Burning United could, could answer. And one of the answers is to blink in a slaughter or a centaur and just stun you straight up. Suddenly, you have two heroes on top of you taking a ton of damage. So, I feel like this is going to be a tough game for Dendi, despite how, how well he played it so far. It's a different way of play, though, if you think about it. Because if, for whatever reason, Sing or Sashka have to be the ones to interrupt that dismember by blinking in, then you're already putting yourself in the way of call down the bristle back and the shaker. You know, it, it's not just like a rock, paper, scissors sort of thing. There's a lot more that goes into the fights. And Necroman could be getting caught out here. Has that mech available? My nuts. Wonder's Curse comes out. Is he going to be able to get the relocate? He's not even casting it. Actually, will eventually use it, but it's a little bit too late. And he lets his Shadow Fiend go down. In the meantime, Shadow Demon and uh, Sashka bottom lane managed to find Dendi. And they should be able to kill the Swiss the second time when he re-relocates. When he locates. Yeah, he, he locates. Yes. Oh, oh no, actually, he actually, yeah, he gets his back up. Off. That'll work too. He had a lot of time to get that relocate off. He had days <laughs> to relocate him out. And now Sting going back in, throws out the stun and the amp. Funix here. Throw out a little bit of guff and a couple of quill sprays. I like the fact that whenever a Burning United has an entire ultimate up, they're very aggressive. Yeah. But that's you always you, have a get out of jail free card. That's so. how you have to play it, yeah. right? Like the cooldown isn't even that long. At level one, it's only like 90 seconds. And then at level three, it's a minute. Oh, they also got Centaur Blink, so... Yep. It's go time. Hook is nice gonna come hook. through, and Stampede, not gonna get used yet. Oh, they'll just walk back out. Did that Splinter Blast seem very fast to you, or is that just my screen? That was really weird. Seemed like normal speed. Oh. Maybe I... Oh, I know why. It's because my laptop is telling me to activate Windows. Thank you. So... The thing I always kind of get into questioning it with Pudge is what item do you go for at this stage of the game? Because gold comes in very sparingly, especially like Dendi right now, he's not finding much kills. I think four staff. Well, four staff is great. You know he loves Blink Dagger. Yeah, but the thing There's is... There's also items like Glimmer Cape. Blink Dagger is such a one-dimensional choice, and Glimmer Cape can be very bad against heroes to have built-in detection like Slardar. Like, not saying in itself the item is bad, but really what magical damage are you trying to negate a burden? Like, it's just Centaur with this combo, I guess, Requiem and Raises. Where There's the, a lot of burst. The majority of it, though, is physical damage. Like, in the late game, you're not going to be worried about glimmering somebody to make them not take a huge amount of magic burst, like against Lushrak. You're going to glimmer them to try to get them out of vision, and most teams will carry dust. And in that case, like, the magic damage reduction isn't really as big of a savior as it would be in most games. Okay, so, so your vote is on 4 staff. Yeah, my vote's 4 staff. I think Blink is yeah, also ghost. very good. Oh, I went ghost up there. Okay. okay, so just to deal with that physical damage yeah. that you mentioned. The physical damage thing is huge. Maybe he just feels Radiant he's not going to be able to get the farm to get to a force. Attack. And Blink, I think, is just... It's such an all-in choice. Because if you get caught out with a Blink Dagger, then you're just dead. But of course you can still get away. We will see a smoke here. Our right, sure? goes for the fish. You see homie? Yeah, he's dead. Do you so, continue to Roche? I don't no, think no, you can. No, 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 you can't. Back off. Stampede is available. Wisp is now trapped on the high ground. Stampede being used. And Shadow Fiend kind of have to fight this two-man stun coming in. And Hobolt's going to get brought down. The, oh, actually, the ultimate's going to come through. Hobolt's being killed up by the Winter River. And Shadow Fiend's going to go in and absolutely no looks like the Death River Fiend will take him down. Sox's going to come in, but he's actually being focused by four heroes. It's going to be Navi taking a 4-1 to one fight. Roshan, not low enough for them to take. I felt like that fight could have gone very differently if Burning United just chained one or two something together. Let's look at how low Navi heroes were. The Requiem never went off. That's yeah, the problem. That's if the that thing. Requiem went off, I guarantee you Burning win that fight. Like, Sing went in with a really nice double stun, caught out two, and the hook even missed from Dendi. Like, he, I think he was trying to hook Necroman into the pit to isolate him and just straight up kill him, because that would have almost ensured they win the fight anyway. Right. But it just didn't end up happening that way. The Winter's Curse was huge from Sonico. That was the saving grace, I think, for Navi to pull themselves out of that engagement. So, so far for me, if we're looking at an MVP, that Winter Wyvern just won it with that play. Yeah, also I do want to point out the uh, the heal spell. Obviously the target he healed still died, but the fact that you delay the death for one or two more seconds, make them focus on the gyrocopter more, that one or two second also decides the fight. Yeah, that was one of those situations where just, like like you mentioned, one or two seconds can just be the make or break. And I think Funic might be thinking about clearing that little bit of an ancient stack that he has going over there. The one nice thing that Burton have going too is 
Whenever they want, they can go for Roche because Amplify Damage just lets you kill it so damn fast. Mm -hmm. and you have one hero, I think, on the team who can break it, and then you can just throw out the amp and just go for it. Fuck. A lot of Dota left to be played in this game, and I'd still say it's it's pretty 50-50. Like, Dendi is like, not really getting a ton of farm, but it's Pudge, so as long as he's landing his hooks, that's really all that's important. They still have plenty of damage output to be able to get kills. Our style is getting closer to his Blink Dagger, and once he gets the Echo going, the Winter's Curse combination on top of that and call down, their team fight's still very scary. Yeah, I do agree with you, your statement about how this game's going to go on for a while because, like I mentioned, how Burden United doesn't have the best high ground. Neither does Navi. I mean, Jaro could kind of walk up and hit it a bit, but he's kind of low range. You're dealing with double blink dagger initiation. So if you misstep once, you're just dead. Yeah. And uh, the, one that, the one thing about Navi, though, is they, they do have an insanely tanky hero on the Bristleback to lead the front lines. Like, That's true. And you can just walk up. Yeah, in the late game, Bristleback well, can just walk into the tower and punch it. Amp is... Amp can make the tankiest hero not so tanky. Yeah, that's true as well. That's so I imagine fun. if... I mean, I think Navi should pick up a medallion into Solo Crest. But, but I always say that. When Solo Crest Chris. is amazing. Yeah. Uh oh, come with me. Oh, what a disruption, but I think it just kills him anyway. I mean, he's a cool dog. I think that's fine for Burning United. That's a four-man smoke. You're like, okay, you, I Yeah, lost but I team. think they get a tower of this as well. I think they were going to get a tower regardless if who they pick. And if you pick the Shadow Demon, that's the least valuable target. Fortified. So would you call that a Pylai Dye smoke tank gang? Yeah, sure. Okay. I was, I was asking, bottom tower is I'm not sure attack. if you needed to throw the Pylai Dye on it, but... Actually, the tower is still alive. No, I'm They're saying it's a good thing. Here... Okay. I agree. Now, it is a very good thing that your support died. And the fact that Burden managed to keep their tier 1 standing is also good, but they are going to teleport react to your bottom, a Splinter Blast. Gonna slow Necroman. I don't think Fonix is gonna be able to. Oh, oh, what? That's the play, man. Going to Fog. Walking around, around that corner. corner. Wrong neighborhood. I mean, that that's the play from like back in 2002 when you start playing Dota, right? Yeah. Like, still works. Still works. And like you said, it you was very bit. unexpected, though. Like, when you know a team fight's gonna come out, you expect that. But if you're just walking around and trying to chase somebody away, you don't really expect the Requiem out of nowhere. Fissure and a hook. Rinse and repeat, come with me. The gang tank? Question mark? Roche is dropping low. low. Oh, that's a two-man stun, and they're gonna try to initiate. Funnick walks in, and he's now in the wrong neighborhood. So, uh, the cooldown's gonna come through. Sissy taking a ton of damage, and it looks like Necroman gets walked or called out. The oh Fissure, the Echo, it's, it's on everybody. Sock blinks back in, but he's blinks into strain. The rocket sinks, and it looks like Black canceled his blink dagger. Roche is very low, and now Navi wants to take a crack at it. I'm not sure if they have the physical damage, though. I don't actually think they Alright, Pudge got a TD. Let's go, boys. Between, Let's go. Between the two of them, alright, this is going to be the manliest rush and attempt ever. There is a buyback from Bristleback. They really want it. Looks like the what? problem is Sing's too low. Like, they, he, the fact that he didn't die it's, there and he's super low health means he's still going to take a really long time to get back to the tent. Well, I think they might be able to do this, though. Do they have vision? They have one more earn charge. They have one more earn charge. I think they can do this. They have relocate as well. They can relocate in. in. Are they gonna do it? Come with me, he's gonna get Fissure. Roshan's dealing a ton of damage here. Oh, here comes the Fissure. He keeps going, he keeps immediately ultimated. And looks like Sinks is gonna get brought down. The relocate defensively back out. They will lose to Roshan as a result. And so will come with me go down. And I do believe Wisp will also go down. That's a very costly fight for Birdie United. That was still a very good relocate from Minots, even if they end up going down here. You wanna fight? I mean, they're going to be able to find Denti. That's one down. Monica's is going to pick up the Aegis, but he may be getting caught out here. There's still four members of Free United left, and Sonic will spin to get an Ice Block and says, See you later, I'm out. There's Ivis who is spawning here, bottom as well. Oh, he's got Aegis. Can it up if he wants. He's going to go for a Requiem onto the Aegis. So Hobos on the back line here gets initiated. Call down's going to get dropped. Meanwhile, they actually just collapse onto Hobos. He's just dead as well. And the two supports on the high ground just watch us and can't do anything. Well, thankfully, at the very least, our style is able to get his way out of there. Look at how aggressive these initiators are, and double blink dagger is pretty scary. What did he drop and kill? Wraithband. Somebody dropped the Wraithband. I okay. think it was uh, Necroman. Alright. Wraithband or Ring of Aquila? Wraithband. Okay. Not Aquila. So, I gotta say, Burden, they, they probably won that. And by probably, I mean definitely. Because not only did they, uh, they kill the Aegis Carrier two times, but they get a tier 1 out of it. Funnick also die back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Wait, did he die back? He bought back just to join the Roche fight earlier. Or faster. Oh, yeah, he did. Wow, okay. So, yeah, that's, that's, that's pretty even huge. worse. And so, 
die back. That means he died three times Dyer's in succession. Top tower is under attack. One of them being Castle by the Ages. Dyer's structures yeah. are fortified. The thing about Bristleback dying in a game like this. What your thought? Because Sock might be in a little bit of trouble. The game. The thing about Bristleback dying in a game like this is that he's expected kind of to go in the front line along with the Pudge. And you're going to just get into a downward spiral of just initiating and dying because heroes like Shadow Fiend and Radiant's Centaur as well as the Slaughter, they're very good at just killing somebody Radiant very quickly. The Soul Catcher and the Amplified Dyer's Damage just melt him. Like yeah. every single time he gets it applied to him and it almost completely negates his Bristleback passes saying go on for a stun initiation here. He's going to only land on Funic, probably not the target of choice. I think at least one for tower diving. Tower nice tower denied by Sonico. Even gets one more harassing Arctic Burn off. There's going to be a purge onto Sonico here. Blink forward right into the Slithering Crush. Sonico evaporates. See you the heck later. Backline Havos gets initiated on but Oh, looks like there's the guy going to be Hope. Dendi gets the quick kill here, but the Blink Shadow Beam with the BKB do a lot of right click. Necromancer says, Dendi, I know you could do this, but I could do it too. Dendi is going to get brought down as well. Choco for Necroman. And this mid game, it seems like it's all the Burden United. It looked really good for Navi early on, but since that Roshan fight, Burden United is just getting all the objectives they want. And yeah, Necroman off that fight manages to secure his Blink Dagger, which is going to be huge for him. Now he can follow attack. up with a Stampede and the Slithering Crush from Sing and just drop a Requiem on whoever. And really, the only person Radiant on Navi who has BKB is Havos at this point. Radiant's and BKB is not kind of like a. It's like, not amazing. Yeah, it's, their team. it's okay. It's just that Burden have a very aggressive kind of damage output style oriented team where, yeah, you want to make sure that you're, you're not going to get stunned, but you also could just get right click to death in like one second. Yeah. Because of Amplify Damage and Soul Catcher, which I, both go through BKB. Assuming you get your BKB off, like there there is some long range initiator inside of Burden United. So let's. We talked about how BKB is not the best for Gyro, but very necessary. The Vanguard on the Bristleback. Normally, it's a very good item, but damage block works very poorly against heavy minus armor, which is what Burden United has. Yeah, so but he does pick up a plate mail, though. Okay, that, that helps a bit, but yeah. he's still, like, he doesn't have an SMY, for example. And okay. lastly, your other core, which is a Pudge, I mean, he's kind of live or die by the hooks, and so far, he's not really finding the hooks. His I mean, he's got a decent amount of them, it's just not been enough. Right. He's been hooking come with me a lot, which Burden United, again, is fine with. So I feel like Navi now has to play for more of the late game, the hooks, to defend their high ground. Because I think for the next 10 to 15 minutes, unless they find like three or four pickoffs in a row, they're going to be seizing control of uh, the map control. And Burden United is going to have the entire map to themselves, and they're going to farm a lot, adding pressure with double blink and relocate ganks. Here comes Dendi, solo gank. He will find Sock, but... Oh, okay. that flank reaction. Well, they're going to spot out a couple more from Navi near the top lane. Come with me, because <laughs> the target of choice again. Oh, come Radiant with me. We'll, we'll die. Dendi didn't reveal his uh, Invis rune, so he could kind of shark around and look for more. Yeah, I think he definitely wants something else. I think killing the Wisp is the right call here. And bottom lane, they're going to be teleport reacting here. Sing and Necroman both getting themselves to safety. At least for the time being. And Denny just does not want to give up. He lands a hook on the Minuts here. Blink forward. No stun coming in just yet. Was actually on cooldown. Stampede is going to go out. Sonico throwing out a Winter's Curse onto just the Wisp. Really wants him dead. The Tether is going to be thrown out. Splinter Blast is there, though. Helps Sonico pick that up inside the jungle. Most got his BKB pop going. Toe to toe with Necroman. Funix also in the area. Uh -oh. He does have a TP available, but I don't think he's going to be able to get away from this one. Chaos is what Navi lives for, and they're winning this fight because of it. Cloak is going to get dodged by Sing Sing. Earn, though, is canceling that blink. What a Fisher coming out here by Art Style. And it's going to be a full on collapse by Burden United. I talked about how Burden United will have the stronger mid game, but not when they're all separated like that. Okay, so any other team besides Navi, I'm looking at the game right now and I'm thinking to myself, they're actually, like, pretty far behind. They are really behind. Yeah, because the Shadow Fiend has about equivalent farm for the Gyro. But the slaughter is going to start becoming more and more of a menace. And then they just find like three That's just not being not easy kills. Yeah. It just boggles my mind how this team can do this in these circumstances. And they were fighting in an area where they basically had no vision at all. They saw two heroes walking away from the tier two, sure. That's that's fair. But otherwise, it was like, yep, we're going to walk high ground. Dendi finds a kill on the Wisp with the help of Sonico. Then Necroman's out of position, and we just find more cleanup. Like, they killed both cores and a support. 
and come with me top lane. So they basically killed four heroes in a row. Just making sure which gem Bristleback is holding and it's purchased by Navi. Yep. Because if it's hurting United's gem, that's another kind of but they're not prepared to have. Fun. I don't think Burden were far enough ahead or felt like they needed the gem enough to warrant purchasing it. And plus, their Shadow Demon is broke. Like, he's got... He's almost nothing. got a Force Staff. And he's about to die oh again. Oh, God, come with me. They're going to relocate in, though. Nice defensive pitcher coming in from Art Style. Oh. Keep Superman at bay. Oh, God, Funnick. Yeah, Art Style blocked the hook that it was meant for uh, Funnick. He was going to hook him out of that tree. And that would have been it. Would have dodged a relocate game. Right. A little bit of miscommunication. Sing Sing will blink out just fine. Is that Sing Sing Blinker Cape? No, no, it's just Okay. Yeah. Oh, they're they, chasing. Yeah, they got the gem from Art Style. They really want that back. Future will hit on Sing Sing. He was completely to run BKB. Gets activated. Sing Sing being chased all the way to the base. He will finally die. Sprint didn't help there. And Vols, he's not done. He's actually just broken in the high ground. Okay, disruption coming out. Blink stun on the Art Style. Winter's Curse going to be there. Necroman comes in with the BKB. Sasha going down. Requiem trying to channel, but he gets dismembered during the cast. Arcel getting pulled back up by that cold embrace. The hook's going to land. Gem on deck. Somebody needs to pick that up before they go back to base. Come with me! He wants it so bad, but he might end up sacrificing his own life for it. The gem drops once again. Come with me. He wanted it. He wanted it. It's a little bit too much. Okay, Havos. That's not your base, dude. Dude, Havos needs it, man. Alright, he knows. He's tanking T3. That's experience right there, boys. That's, we've, we've evolved to five. Alright. <laughs> for that. Sorry, yeah. I was, I really for a second thought he was going to go deep on that. I, and I, I mean, was, I was disappointed. I was that terrified. I was disappointed that he didn't go for it, but... Dyer's again, this is like just the prize logic. Like, if he's a down, look at the game, the game going. It, it should be Burning United that's winning. The fact that it was uh, Funnick that died in the beginning of the fight, right? Yep. So... He dies. We don't need this, right? You lose the tankiest member of your team. Be like, all right, let's go, guys. Let's chase. And they somehow win the fight. I think a lot of it also has to do with the fact that no one has BKB on Burden except for the Shadow Fiend. Right. So, for instance, when Sing goes in a team fight, he doesn't have that tense against of magic immunity that makes it so, like, Pudge and the Gyrocopter and the Shaker who just deal massive amounts of damage to him. And not only that, but it stops him from being able to Ooh. damage himself. And hello, there's a... Sing getting caught out here by uh, Sonico and Dendi. Splinter Blast securing that kill. Perfect now, shift queuing on that dismember. No, uh, no, what did I sprint stun thing is called? Funnick is going to get surrounded. But here comes uh, Havos with the BKB. Oh, that damn it. Not actually connecting. Two supports dying immediately. And Necromant BKB, you know, he's going to be going down slow. That's a trip kill on Havos. And it's only the guy right outside of the is looking for them. I think the gyro's online, yeah, I guess. I don't know about you. Yeah, he's online. We haven't really talked a lot about it, but if you think about the fact that Gyrocopter does a lot of physical damage in an AoE against a team with a Shadow Demon and a Wisp together, like, those supports do not tank up very quickly. And most of the time, what you see them buy is stuff like um, Glimmer Caves, for example, or Force Staffs, as Come With Me is building right now. There's no mech which means that the Wisp doesn't really have that much armor, so the fact that Havos is getting like these juicy black cannons off during team fights, it just annihilates the supports. Like, they can't stay in the fight. AoE damage is too much. But we're seeing a very sizable lead on the side of Na'Vi, and the use of their pickup for Pudge is huge. Now he doesn't rely on anybody. Here comes the initiation, but more or less just to kind of uh, delay that push. They need 10 more seconds for Shadow Fiend, but keeping the Shadow Fiend coming back with half the souls, his Requiem would be like Luster. I would actually say that in this game, maybe even getting something like a, a Lotus Orb might be worth it. Just for, for Navi. Like, just to be able to dispel, right? What are you dispelling the amp? Yeah, I mean, you just put it on Bristleback, for example. Or you put it on the pod, or even hold it. Like, any of it's good. Your other alternative is going for the Solar Press. Oh, come with me again, Tim. He's gonna get hooked, and he's gonna be dead. Echo's gonna go on the back line here on both these guys. Like you said, the lack of BKB. Oh, Castle from Winter Reverend, and again, Shadow Fiend initiating for Na'Vi. He's actually on the back line, being chased by two in the front. It's the Pudge, it's the Shaker, it's doing a lot of work. Such MP being trying to get them out. They will get up, the Wisp gets Fissure down. Shadow Fiend still being chased, Rocket giving them sight a little bit. And Necroman is gonna go down, that four for nothing fight. Well, they might not have the high ground, but four heroes set on the enemy side, you are gonna just walk up the high ground. 
and start killing towers. That Arctic Burn from Sonico was so on point. Like with that stampede, Necroman ideally would have been able to blink away, but since Arctic Burns the damage over time, yeah. every time you hit him, it's like another five seconds, he just can't blink away. That venture curse immediately after Shadow Beam blinked in, though. That's what won yeah. the fight. Oh, oh wrong. Four steps for action. Sonshka, okay, getting it taken down here. That's another Beyond Godlike for Hibosta. There's still four dead on the side of Burden. Thanks to me, one second. They just call it. And he well played. Navi taking the series 2-0 in Burn United. This is the reason why Navi can take Hush, where a lot where a lot of other teams could not have picked it. Because a lot of other teams would have just lost that new game. But somehow Hush on the side of Navi just making the miracles happen. He landed the hooks we needed to, more importantly. I gotta give a shout out to Sonico as well.